Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Lastic A. Skyward Madison, and today I have a developer's build of Open Tunes. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is a really sad animation. In fact, on my media player, uh, it rendered kind of okay, but when I put this animation, the render, into my editing software, for some reason it only plays half of the animation, so half of the head turn. But the glitchiness where it decided that it's not going to render the left side of his face or the left side of his page right eye, for some reason, that is a legitimate glitch. Anyways, if you recall, the first time that I reported on OpenTunes Marevna, I said the following. Uh, I would like to mention that this specific developer, at Agni, uh, have a lot of more plans to for further development of uh, the horizontal timeline. The perspective is the ability to make point-based shape morphing animation the same way as it's done in After Effects, Synfig, Moho, uh, or Moho, uh, there is already some more work being done on that. If I click on this video, I'm not going to show you too much of the video, uh, just simply because, you know, I might run into like little something stupid like a copyright infringement. So uh, if I stay below 30 seconds, there shouldn't be an issue. And for some reason, it's just stuck on loading. Let's open it in a new tab. All right, so what we can see is inside of this video, what what he's doing is he has the control point editor, and I don't know how he's doing this. If Maybe if there was some release notes, I might be able to decode and figure it out. But what he's doing is he's using the control point editor, and you see that? You see that? He animated with that just, just by moving something with the control point editor. And that video was aired 14 months ago. So I've been really excited to try this feature out. I actually had an opportunity to report on this issue a few months ago. I even got excited and told everyone I had a really big story, but I never actually showed that story. And the reason was because this feature was in a very bad state. And even though this feature still, it really does, it still has a very long ways to go to be functional, to render properly, to do all sorts of different things properly. In order for it to actually be a functional means of animation, it has a long ways to go. Now, if any of you guys have seen my OpenTunes News V-Paint demonstration video, you guys have a little bit of an idea as to what this feature is. Minus the solid vector fills and such like that, there are differences. Minus the ability to rig up separated lines, minus the ability to merge lines. There's a lot of things that this feature doesn't have, but being able to sculpt one keyframe to another and be able to adjust the animation with the in-betweens and such like that, just by sculpting a little bit here and there, this has some similarities. Now, surprisingly, this feature in some ways is further further along than where I thought it was. And in other areas, it's further behind than I thought it was. So if you guys would like to actually bug test this, they do need bug testers. A link in the video description below will be where you can go ahead and download this. But make sure, make sure, I'm serious about this, make sure that you read the download instructions. I'm going to say that again. Make sure you read the download instructions. You're going to need to back up your OpenTune stuff folder because like me, you might just have to replace your OpenTune stuff folder with your backup. Not only that, but you don't want to be opening up scenes that you're attached to. You want to be working on scenes that you can go ahead and throw away that you really just don't care about. But even though this feature is really, really in a basic stage in development, the infrastructure is there and it has every potential to one day get introduced into OpenTunes, possibly, and speed up the time in which it takes for you to animate in general. It might just streamline the whole animation process to being extremely easy and extremely fast. Who knows what this feature might mean for open tunes down the road. Just keep in mind that this feature has a long ways to go. Also, open tunes has found a serious lack of developers. If there are any developers that are impressed with the ideas 
of this feature or open tunes in general, feel free to go to the link in the video description below where you can go ahead and leave a comment for this pull request on GitHub and you can go ahead and possibly... So at this point I create a line on a vector level and I press on the new plus button icon on the timeline which opens up a drop-down list of every line drawn out onto the timeline. Now, there's some new terminology for this feature. When animating with the Animate tool, it's called Cell Keyframing. But when keyframing with the Control Point Editor, it's called Control Point Keyframing, okay? Right here, I discover that you can't select more than one control point. So, that's a current limitation to the feature, and that's fine. But it is a shame, because being able to select multiple control points and being able to rotate them and move them about would make the sculpting process so much easier. But in a short period of time, I was able to get this line to do this animation, and this was my live commentary when I was working on this little animation here. <laughs> uh, you have any idea how long that would take to animate? <laughs> uh, like even if it's just one line, you want to animate a line to do that behavior? <laughs> oh. I mean, this feature has a long ways to go, but that is, oh, I got to see that again. That's just. Now currently, with how things are with this feature right now, once a control point keyframe is planted on the timeline, it can't be moved. So it's important that if you're doing a complex animation, you have to have all of your timing set in stone, which means you'll probably need to have a rough animation to work off of. However, I do try to do a complex animation in this video, and it's not that the feature is too limited, it's just that it's too buggy. I try several different different animations in this video and only one of them wound up looking the way I thought it would but rendered rather oddly but at least it rendered something I tried to create a new control point but it caused some strange behavior and pressing control Z didn't work on getting rid of it it also eventually wound up deleting all of my control point keyframes and that was just about everything eventful that I did with that solitary line. I wanted to create something impressive, so initially I used this bench as something to rotoscope rather than trying to do a rough animation of something. Already I can see how rotoscoping something like this or animating something like this could be way faster with this feature. However, with the constant bugs undoing all of my work, I found myself redoing everything over and over and over again. And that's fine, because this feature is not even close to being released. And the main goal of this video was to render something to prove that you can render, and to prove that you can animate at least something. Doesn't matter how buggy it is, as long as it's capable. This video is me bug testing. You're supposed to break open tunes when you're bug testing. Early on, I discovered that sometimes lines can't be selected at all between two control points, and yet the line can be selected at a different control point or location. Copying and pasting with the selection tool does appear to work, which is good news. I don't know if it deletes control point keyframes or not, but that's something Thing. Saving your work appears to work. I had an instance where I loaded the scene up again and it worked fine, but I tried opening it again the following day and the scene loaded but with no levels, and I couldn't find those levels anywhere. So I don't know if it was my fault or if it's the fault of the feature. I didn't use the cut tool in this video, but use at your own risk. It also seems like a gamble when a control point keyframe will be generated by an action that I do or not. But I'm sure that's because the control point keyframes delete themselves on a regular basis. It's weird that I need to press on the white keys to activate the control point animation process on the timeline by creating the first control point keyframe. By doing so, 
I turn these keys blue on the X sheet. I feel as though it would be tedious, but it feels like I should click on these white to blue keyframes in order to create the next control point keyframe, like taking a snapshot with a camera. And leaving this decision to the end user would probably reduce the logic processing that OpenTunes needs in order to create and oftentimes deleting control point keyframes. Maybe being able to interact with the interface that way might make it so that OpenTunes won't just delete your keyframes. However, doing it that route might make it difficult to understand which lines need the keyframe and which ones don't. So maybe I'm completely off base. I've noticed that if you hover your mouse over various lines on the timeline, the lines on the viewer will actually wind up showing up and getting highlighted. That's really cool, but it doesn't go very far in terms of making heads or tails of what lines are where on the timeline. Also keep in mind that you currently can't rename any of the lines in the control point animation process. And as of right now, the developers really aren't interested in adding that feature because the core of the control point animation process needs to be functional before adjusting and tweaking things like that. It seems like I got the best results when only a few lines were on a solitary level, to be honest. It is really satisfying being able to move lines around and seeing your animation come into shape at least a little bit. Now, if I went ahead and showed you every last bit of footage that I captured and talked about every single bug that I ran into, this video would be way longer. And so, I'm going to save you guys the trouble of having to watch every last little thing while bug testing this thing. So, once I tried opening the scene with the bench and it failed to load properly, I decided, okay, well, how about I treat one of my previous animations as if it were a rough animation. I wanted to revisit this animation using a tool like this. Let's see if it's possible. Well, it turns out it wasn't really that possible. <laughs> it still wound up deleting all of my control point keyframes, and that's fine, that's fine. It's just too much of an advanced animation. Too many curves to the shape and everything that need to be manhandled, babysat, from frame to frame. Just too much. It was just too much for this feature to deal with, and that's fine. But the reason why I'm showing you guys this content is because of the pump tool. Now if you look carefully, I start using the pump tool and you can actually see it's an it's an animated pump. You can actually see the line getting thicker and thinner. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that cool? But after OpenTunes crashed on this thing, I decided, okay, I need something even easier to work with. I need to have just a few circles and a smiley face. That's what I need. So that's when I started to work on the animation that wound up being at the very beginning of this video. The one that was really glitchy and really didn't render the entire animation for some reason. Actually it did. It rendered the whole animation because I was able to see it inside of my uh, media player. But once I put it into my editing software it only played half the animation. So. It's important that everyone realize that whatever criticisms or perceived criticisms that I have of this feature, they are not from a position of, oh, I hate this thing, why doesn't it work properly? I understand why it's not working properly. This, that's the whole nature of this. Whenever you're bug testing something, the nature is to get frustrated, to get to a point where you break the program, even if it's not intentional. The whole point is to find the problems so that the developers have a means to fix them. The main problem with this animation, as I went along through it bit by bit, is the fills. Now, as you can see, they have animated fills that work inside of this feature with the eyeball. You can actually see it. And I, I like the fact that they are able to get the fills to be animated. However, it seems like any time that there's a line that overlaps with the fill, it winds up screwing everything up. And so you have to make sure that whatever you have filled is on a different level from what you have animated. And that can be really difficult to really gauge and to estimate, okay, so this, you can't do that with this over here and such like that. You have to babysit the entire animation to make sure that no line outside of what you want to have filled winds up colliding with that fill. It, as you play through the animation, it'll go ahead and recolor the animation. And so you see me redoing steps even still right here. You just see me constantly redoing things. But in the end, I feel like I got 
a half decent animation. It's sometimes it randomly creates uh, control points that screw up your animation or completely moves things randomly. I loved working on this feature. I felt like it was a privilege and thank you very much. And that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to click on the bell. And if you guys would like to see more content from me, feel free to click on anything that's appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.